Hi everyone, and welcome to another release of System Platform 2017. This is Update 2. In Update 2, there's new versions of InTouch HMI, the web client, InTouch Access Anywhere, the application server including InTouch OMI, Historian, and other aspects. Let's get right into it and see what we've delivered. We've added several new features to the InTouch line of products. Let's start with InTouch HMI. InTouch HMI got some significant improvements in Update 2. We took over 20 of the native InTouch-only script functions that people have been using for years, and we ported them over to .NET and added them to the Orchestra Graphics Library. Now you can use them directly inside Orchestra Graphics Scripting. For example, here we see the function to launch an external application, with the traditional InTouch function being used on the left button and the new Orchestra Graphics Script function on the right-hand side. They both do the same thing. We've also added a new feature for those of you that use network application development. This will remind you to notify your users of any changes if you exit Windowmaker without notifying them. For those of you that use remote desktop servers and remote desktop clients to access InTouch, we've made some updates to the way that InTouch acquires and releases its licenses when used in a session on a remote desktop server. The first change was to ensure a more reliable license release. When the remote desktop server terminated a session out from underneath us, this prevents stranded licenses due to network glitches or folks simply forgetting to close Window Viewer before they terminate their RDP client. The second change to licensing was how we deal with multiple RDP sessions coming in from the same client node. In the past, the client ID used when acquiring a license varied depending on whether you were the first session in or an additional session coming from the same client. In Update 2, all the RDP sessions from the same RDP client will have their client ID based on the same format, and they will be sequential, regardless of the startup or shutdown sequence. This ensures that only the required licenses are used in a failover and load balance scenarios. On the cybersecurity front, we've improved IT compliance by allowing InTouch Windowmaker to run as a user without administrative privileges. In addition, We've added OS authentication as an option to the Alarm database logger and the Purge and Archive utility. Let's take a look at the new features for the InTouch web client. The most exciting web client feature for Update 2 is the new Fast Switch. Fast Switch for web client moves you from Windowmaker right into the web client browser, so you can test your changes without having to publish your view app. The Fast Switch launches the web client in what we call preview mode, and any changes that you make to symbols or your application will show up immediately in the web client. New to the web client configuration in Windowmaker is the ability to select a home symbol. You can select a specific symbol within the hierarchy of the web client root folder. When you go to runtime, this symbol will be automatically selected in the navigation and displayed when you first open the web client. In web client itself, we've added some new features to the header that appears at the top of the screen in the browser. We now display the application name and the symbol name right in the header. You'll also see a few new icons, including the home, including the home button, an alerts button that toggles a notification pane that holds messages about communication issues or an expired license. There's also a new full screen mode which expands on the standard functionality that you get from the F11 key in your browser. Selecting full screen will hide the header to give you a full screen of space to view your graphics. Moving the mouse up to the top of the screen brings the header back. In fact, if you like the header but you want to stay in full screen, you can pin it. We've also made improvements in the speed for displaying the graphics. And as you can see, we've expanded the set of animations and graphic elements that we support within Orchestra Graphics, including gradients, 
trend pen, and other elements. We've also added support for native mobile web browsers. We support Safari on iOS, Chrome on Android, and Edge on Microsoft Surface. Let's take a look at this in action on an iPhone X. You can see the video of the actual phone on the right and the streaming recording of the phone's screen on the left. We can point Safari at a PC that's running in Touch Window Viewer. We are required to securely log into the web client using our Windows credentials. Once we're authenticated, the web client is displayed inside the phone's browser. Notice how the header and the menus have automatically adjusted to the native form factor of the device. We see that pan and zoom are fully supported, and they work using the native gestures of the phone. Turning the phone on its side is fine. The graphics resize to take full advantage of the screen real estate. Do you want to view live, up-to-date information from your production system right inside your own web application or web portal like SharePoint? Well, with Update 2, you can directly embed Orchestra Graphics using the iFrame API. It gives you secure, licensed access to all the Orchestra Graphics in your deployed application. Simply include the iFrame tag in your page and the same HTML5 rendering engine that powers InTouch Web Client will display the live graphic directly inside your page without the menu or the headers of the web client itself. Be sure to look for even more options and capabilities in the very near future with this powerful new API. And finally, a popular request that we address in Update 2 was to resize the symbol within the browser whenever the browser was resized. This lets you maximize the use of the available screen and browser real estate. Of course, the graphics aspect ratio is always maintained. InTouch Access Anywhere has been updated to support single sign-on. This allows you to embed InTouch Access Anywhere into a SharePoint page or the user to any other Windows-based web. In this mode, it'll securely share the authenticated user with the server, the user allowing the user to see the InTouch Access Anywhere window inside the iframe without having to re-log in. We've also added full support for multi-touch gestures. This is important when using InTouch Access Anywhere with the new InTouch OMI and all of its new touch gestures, especially the multi-touch gestures like scrunch, and swipe. One of the most anticipated features of Update 2 is preview mode for InTouch OMI view apps. From within the view app editor, you can click the preview button, which launches the view app without having to publish the application. In this mode, the view app is reading most recently saved versions of your view app, the symbols, the layouts, and the model directly from the Galaxy. As you make changes and save them, the preview will automatically and immediately show the new versions. This will dramatically reduce iteration time needed when you're making changes to your view app. Also new to InTouch OMI for update two is view app namespaces. These are logical containers for user-defined attributes that can be used within a view app. You can create a new namespace object in the graphic toolbox. These sit right alongside other shared objects like symbols and layouts. And then in the attribute editor for the namespace, you can define attributes that you want to use within that name. The attributes show up in the autocomplete and can be used as a reference in the view app, in layouts, and in the orchestra symbol custom properties and scripting.
And because they're defined in the GTV, they can be used in multiple view apps, just like symbols. Update 2 brings some new features to asset-based navigation in InTouch OMI. We now give you the ability to assign a friendly name to the navigation nodes that come from the model in App Server. The friendly name allows the application builder to give operators a more domain-appropriate name that they can relate to when browsing the navigation tree at runtime. Also, the asset-based and the custom navigation nodes can be reordered to better suit your needs. These will be displayed in the order that you provided at runtime as well as configuration time. For update, another new and highly requested feature for update two is the show content script function. This is similar to the show graphic functionality that you may be familiar with from InTouch. The show content function provides application builders very precise control over which content, either symbols or layouts, are displayed in each pane, each layout, and on each screen. We've also added support for custom script libraries in the InTouch OMI runtime. This allows you to import your existing custom script libraries and then use them within our custom graphics when they're displayed in the InTouch OMI runtime. Expanding on that type of support, we've also added the ability to use the historical type custom properties within our Kester Graphics and our Kester Graphics scripting in InTouch OMI. And in the area of cybersecurity and IT compliance, you can now run the IDE and other design time applications as a user that doesn't have administrative privileges. This greatly reduces the size of the attack surface for connected systems and is becoming a mandatory requirement for many industries. With Update 1, we introduced alarm overlays onto on-premise Insight charts. Now in Update 2, we've introduced comment support in those same line charts. I can enter a comment and then share it with my team. And view comments. Here in Trend, we also have the alarm overlays, and if I refresh, I'll see the comment I just created in Insight. I can get details about the alarms as well. The operations integration team has delivered significant improvements to the overall speed and the performance of the OPC UA functionality in the toolkit. And finally, the licensing team brought a new feature to Update 2, which solves the problem when a license server machine is accidentally renamed while there are still activated licenses on it. In Update 2, we allow the old ID to remain active so that the licenses can be deactivated without requiring a call to tech support. Thank you very much for watching, and we hope you enjoy all the new features that we've packed into System Platform 2017 Update 2.